Welcome to this presentation from Pawpaw TV. We present an original lecture from Dr. Jerry McLaughlin, Professor Emeritus of Pharmacognosy at Purdue University and winner of the Tyler Prize. He is talking about his life's work. It is presented in nine parts. Since he is talking about a serious condition, we remind you that his remarks cannot be taken as medical advice, but are intended for educational purposes only. If you are viewing this from a country that does not allow this kind of teaching, please stop viewing now. And if you are sick, see a doctor. Maybe you can find one that speaks herbal medicine. All right, just to show you that we've had all kinds of scientific background here. Here's the cover of the journal Natural Products, which is published here at the American Chemical Society, along with the American Society of Pharmacognosy. And we see the picture of pawpaw with the structure of my compounds at the bottom and a butterfly. And this, this was on the cover of that journal for six months back in 1999, and it honored my research, okay? And I'm very grateful for that. But I, I want to also mention the butterfly. You see that butterfly on there? This is a white and black butterfly called the zebra swallowtail butterfly. You know, basically I'm a scientist. I like to answer questions, crazy stuff like, hey, this butterfly has been eating my pawpaw plants. It eats the leaves. It's an obligate parasite on pawpaw leaves, this butterfly is. And it's supposed to be an endangered species, and it is endangered when it gets on my plants. <laughs> and it has this weird looking little caterpillar, you see, that eats up your leaves. And it didn't read my papers that said pawpaw are pesticidal, you know. So this is a good example of evolution of the insect staying ahead of the plant. So this plant made these compounds which are supposed to keep insects from eating the plant and to keep beaver from eating the twigs and cows or deer from eating the leaves. And this insect has figured out a way to grab onto those compounds and use them in some way. So I want to know what is the chemistry of the insect? So I got the world's expert on zebra swallowtail butterflies. He collected me a bunch of butterflies. We freeze dried them, extract them, and assayed them. They kill brine shrimp. Aha. Uh -huh. So then we assayed them with our, our chromatograms and got those peaks. There are the pawpaw compounds in the butterfly. So the butterfly eats the pawpaw and concentrates the compounds. Now if you're a bird and you eat that butterfly, what's going to happen to you? You're going to throw up. And so birds throw up if they eat this butterfly. And so these compounds give the butterfly a natural protection. And that's an example of chemical ecology. The next slide. So these four mechanisms and summarize how pawpaw works. And I don't want to go back over these again. I'm just taking up your time. The next slide. I want to point out then we, we went to beagle studies. And I figured that this stuff wouldn't be toxic because they sh beagles should throw up. And sure enough, that's what happened. We got up to 32 capsules at a time, four times a day. That's 120 some capsules per day, and the dogs just threw up. They had a little watery diarrhea, they threw up and they went their merry way. They gained weight just like the control dogs did over several weeks. And at the end of the experiment, Dr. DeVere said, Jerry, there's no need to sacrifice these dogs. I know they're okay. There's nothing wrong with their livers, I can tell. So he said, uh, I've never seen an anti-cancer substance that wasn't toxic, but you've got one. And this was an FDA approved lab. So pawpaw is very effective and exerts very little toxicity. The next slide. Okay, so then we went to people. And this was a big step. You give something to a person, and you don't know what's gonna happen. So I looked at the dog data and I calculated, well, okay, the dogs can tolerate this much. People ought to be able to tolerate that much at least, and people are tougher than dogs. Guess what? They're not. So the first doses that we gave to three ovarian cancer patients made them all throw up. So I cut the dose in half, and they could tolerate it. And the first lady in one week cut her CA-125 levels from 3,000 to 1,000 on pawpaw. That's the cancer antigen levels and it started to look pretty good. Then I got Dr. Uh, Forsyth, 
over in Reno. He's the director of the Reno Cancer Screening and Treatment Center. And he said, okay, Jerry, I'll give you 20 patients and they'll be terminal. Because in Nevada, if you're a terminal cancer patient and you and your doctor agree, you can take anything experimental that you want to. And you don't have to go through an investigational new drug application or an, um, uh, a board at the company or any of the stupid stuff that the federal government set up to try and protect people, okay? People who are gonna die anyhow, okay? And so uh, we tried the 20 patients. That was two years ago. Out of the 20 terminal cancer patients, all of whom he expected to be dead in one year, seven have died and 13 are still alive. And those 13 people are stable and they're living good lives. They're living with their cancer. And I used to tell my students at Purdue, I lectured on, on pawpaw, or I mean I lectured on cancer for 30 some years. 28 years at Purdue, and I tell my students, what's the definition of life? And I get all these esoteric definitions. And I, no, life is the interval between birth and death. That's it. Life is an interval between birth and death. And what do we do with all the good things we try to do with health care? Is we try to extend the interval. Nobody, nobody in this room has an indefinite interval. Nobody's going to live forever. If we can extend an interval for somebody, we're going to do some good. So I've got some folks now that have been kept alive several months beyond when they were supposed to be alive. Just a couple weeks ago, we lost a guy in Poland with brain cancer, but he was supposed to die in February. We gave him several months. And in this wellness report that was passed out, this little newspaper-like thing, there are 19 case studies in there of people from our study of 94 people over the past two years with them giving their testimonials on taking pawpaws. And a couple of them actually have viruses, even MS, multiple sclerosis. A lady can now write with her right hand and she couldn't before for three years. Took pawpaw one month and that helps to prove that viruses probably cause MS. Hepatitis C, we've had some good results with that. And we haven't got studies to prove all that, but it's gonna happen. And people are taking it even for the common cold. <laughs> and it seems to be helping, because they're antiviral. You may find some of Dr. McLaughlin's published work listed at the National Library of Medicine website www.pubmed.org. Look for entries under the term acetogenin and his name McLaughlin, comma, JL. Copyright 2008, Richard Lund. All rights reserved.